today is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. And it's good to be back here again in St. Mary's. It's also the 19th of October, the day of the demonic, satanic beatification of Pope Paul VI in Rome. It's also the day of ending of the evil synod on the destruction of the family in Rome also. And the epistle for this 19th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from the St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 4. Brethren, be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put on a new man, who according to God is created in justice and holiness of truth. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak ye the truth every man with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your anger. Give not place to the devil. He that stole, let him now steal no longer. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have something to give him that suffereth need. Then the Gospel is taking that according to St. Matthew chapter 22. At that time Jesus spoke to the chief priests and the Pharisees in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a king who made a marriage for his son. And he sent his servants to call them that were invited to the marriage, and they would not come. Again he sent other servants, saying, Tell them that were invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My beeves and fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come ye to the marriage. But they neglected, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and the rest laid hands on his servants, and having treated them contumeously, put them to death. But when the king had heard of it, he was angry, and sent in his armors he destroyed those murderers, and burnt their city. Then he said to his servants, The marriage indeed is ready, but they that were invited were not worthy. Go ye therefore to the highways, and as many as you shall find, call to the marriage. And his servants going forth into the ways, gathered together all that they found, both the bad and the good. And the marriage was filled with guests. And the king went on in to see the guests, and he saw there a man who had not on his wedding garments. And he said to him, Friend, how comest thou in hither, not having on a wedding garment? But he was silent. Then the king said to the waiters, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the exterior darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. <coughs> Those are the words of today's Holy Gospel. <coughs> Father and the Son of the Ghost, Amen. On this 19th Sunday after Pentecost, we have a brief history of the world, the history of many souls, the history of the Jews, the history of our church, told in a parable. Many histories. In fact, the history of the vast majority of souls. And in the first part of the parable. And then the history of the remainder in the second part of the parable. God invited all men to his marriage feast. When he made this world, he made it for his son. He made it for his own glory. He made it for us to get to the kingdom of heaven, to give honor and glory to God. But what happens? He invited Adam to the feast, but he did not come, because he wanted to eat a forbidden fruit and sin by pride. He invited the Jews to the feast, and he invited all the people of the Old Testament to the feast by the Old Testament prophets. But they would not come. They neglected. They went by all the manner of sin. And then... He decided to make the feast more appealing. Therefore, he sent his only begotten son to this earth. And he killed the fatted calf. 
That is, he sent our Lord Jesus Christ to death on the cross. Transformed human nature. He gave us a new priesthood. The priesthood of the New Testament. Which would be a priesthood that could give life. He gave his son the power of the word. He was the word made flesh. <coughs> that when he would speak the word of divine truth. And when he would give this word to his holy church which is the mystical body. Surely everyone would see the beauty of the divine word. See the beauty of the son. Who was killed on the cross for our sins. See the beauty of the saints that he has created down the last 2,000 years. See the beauty of our holy mother the church. See the beauty of her divine truth that is contained in the 12 articles of the creed. See the beauty of her sacraments. Those seven sacraments. The beauty of grace that has gone out to convert so many souls. And surely they will come to the feast. But they neglected. Neglected. They neglected. One to his farm. Another to his merchandise. And the rest, they took the servants, these other servants that came, treated them contumeously, and put them to death. And it is the history of our world. And we are now on the stage where all of these things have happened in the society of St. Pius X. And all these things have happened in Catholic tradition. And all these things have happened in the whole New Testament church. And God is going to become angry, as he did. Eventually the word gets to the king. The king is God the Father. And God the Father is very patient. But one day the word gets to him. One day he has had enough. And he becomes angry. And he will send his armies. And he will kill those murderers. And burn their city. And then he will send more servants out again. And he will go to the highways and the hedges and gather the bad and the good. Firstly the bad, and secondly the good. The good are hard to find, there are very few of them. The bad are easy to find and they're all about. And so they went and gathered whomsoever they could find. Firstly the bad and secondly the good. And then they were brought into the feast. And when the bad and the good come into the feast, the king comes in order to observe the servants. One of those who came to the guests. And he finds one who had not on his wedding garment. Friend, why didst thou come in here without thy wedding garment? And he will be cast out with a gnashing of teeth, weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This parable of our Lord speaks of many things. But one of the things <clears throat> that we see in the world today, that the, 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 we are at a time in which God has invited all of us to the kingdom of heaven. He's invited us to the truth. And what has happened? Everyone has turned away from it. They have neglected and they have killed. And the time is coming again very shortly where they will put us to death again. The time is coming very shortly where we will see that the servants will be treated continuously and put to death again. And it will come as our Lord Jesus Christ himself said. He said at the end of the world it will be a little different. They will kill you thinking they do a service to God. They will kill you because they are good, because they are holy. And in the name of God, as a friend of God, they will kill the true friends of God. And how is this done? By a massive and total corruption of the mind. What is the devil? He is the father of lies. God the Father, he is the father of the Son. And the Son is called the Word. And when the Word was made flesh, He has called the truth. And He said, I am the truth. So there is God the Father who is the Father of the truth. And then there is a false Father, the Father of lies. And the Father of lies has entered into the Catholic Church. And He's taken it over. He has entered into the Pope. He has entered into the bishops. He has entered into the priests. He has entered into the Society of St. Pius X. <coughs> he has entered into Catholic tradition. And He has taken over. And the lies are being spread. And these lies lead to damnation. We have here, for instance, in the kingdom of hell. It is called the kingdom of pandemonium. It is called the kingdom of chaos. But our Lord Jesus Christ himself said that there is order in the kingdom of hell. Well, if you go to hell, you'll find that there's the streets. It's laid out in a pattern of streets. If you want to know the pattern, just look at the map of Washington, D.C. That's the shape of the streets in the city of hell. 
And so there is order to the streets. It's very bad for traffic. <laughs> Not good for traffic, always passing those stupid five streets because you're always somewhere in the pentagram or you're somewhere in that square in the circle. There is a design, there is an order, it's built on a swamp like Washington, D.C. It has the same street layout as Washington, D.C. There is an order to pandemonium. And there are several places in hell where you can live. You can live on the north side of the city, you can live on the south side of the city, you can live on the east side of the street and on the west. There are many different neighborhoods in hell. And all the neighborhoods are about to be filled in our times. And we find these various neighborhoods. They are neighborhoods of liars. And there are many levels of liars. Each one of them has their own place in the kingdom of hell. And the father of lies has ordered them. They don't see the order themselves, but there is order in the kingdom of hell. And you have options as to which place you wish to live. And you see an example of this, this weekend. This weekend, and this day, the 19th of October 2014, which is a very dark day in the history of our Holy Church, down the last 2,000 years. On this day, the most wicked of all popes, who is in the bottom of hell. Popes have a special place in hell. There are many popes in hell. But there's a special place for Paul VI. He doesn't get in the place of hell where the other popes are damned are. He's got a special place in hell. And this pope who has a special place in hell, he is beatified on this day. And we find also on this day a synod on the family. And Father Z in his blog, and the SSPX and his teachy.org have a condemnation and concerns about this synod. And we can lay it all like this. When you go to hell, there are the odd-numbered houses on the east side of the street. There is even-numbered houses on the west side of the street. And you want to know which side of the street? Look at the address. There's 1412 and there's 1413. 1413, that's on the liberal side of the street. 1412, that's on the conservative side of the street. That's where the balanced people go. They're even. And the balanced and even people who don't have an uneven keel who aren't crazy like the insane priests of the resistance, who aren't crazy like the insanity of the saints, and who aren't crazy like the insanity of the liberals. The real liberals are crazy. The real liberals are odd. The real liberals are pushing for the kingdom of Satan. And the real followers of Christ are pushing for the kingdom of Christ. But the balanced people, they live on the even side of the street. And they have a special place in hell. There are many who will reside in these neighborhoods. They are the neighborhoods of those who say, <clears throat> we are against the modernism of the church. We are against the evil that's going on. We are against all the wicked things. But we must be balanced. Father Z says in his blog, it was earlier St. Peter Priest, he says, well, you know, the synod was very bad. It was taken over. Wicked bishops and wicked cardinals took over the synod on the family and they talked about how the homosexual needs to be, begin to be accepted in society and how there's grace that flows inside of those people that are faithful to their boyfriends and girlfriends until, of course, they find a new boyfriend, a new girlfriend to be faithful to. Temporary fidelity. Temporary fidelity is a very common thing in our times. Everyone knows about temporary fidelity. What's the reason of temporary fidelity? I will be faithful to you until such time as you are no longer useful to me. And then I will find someone else to be faithful to until such time as they no longer give me pleasure. And then I will find someone else to be faithful to until such time as they stop paying the bills. And I will find someone else to be faithful to until such time as they don't interest me anymore. And then I will find someone else to be faithful to. But I am always faithful. And what are we faithful to? The God of self. The God spoken of by St. Augustine. The God who built the city of self, not knowing he was building a city. And it's a city of the devil. It's a city of the damned. And there is order in that city. And there are neighborhoods in that city. And there are rulers in that city. There are soldiers in that city. There are police in that city. There is a purpose of that city. And it is evil in all levels. We belong to a city. The majority of people do not belong to the city of God. And now we see in our times, you have levels of wickedness. You have those that are very grateful about the wonderful events of today. 
And those that say, you know, finally the Pope is more with it. Then you have those that are angry about today, like Father Z in the fraternity of St. Peter. Oh my goodness, bad cardinals took over the synod. And they looked at the Pope, and the Pope was very pensive. And the Pope was very serious, Pope Francis. And finally, when they asked, when one of the cardinals stood up and complained, and he said, you know, what is this going on? You're manipulating the synod. These things, these modern teachings about homosexuality, these modern teachings about the family, they're going against the true spirit of Vatican II. And we got to follow the true spirit of Vatican II. <coughs> and they looked for some guidance from the Pope, but he's serious and pensive and silent. <coughs> but obviously, he's deeply disturbed because he's a very good Pope. And then, of course, he nods his head and he agrees to the signing of the documents, the publishing of the documents that are going to be wicked documents coming from this synod. What a terrible thing. Surely there must be a crisis in the church. And then there are those that are against this liberal perspective. And they say, no, the synod is more seriously wrong than that. These live in a different neighborhood of hell. And these say, as Bishop Flay, says, well, you know that the problem of the synod goes all the way back to Vatican II. Because in Vatican II, there was a separation between the pastoral and the dogmatic. The dogma and the pastoral were separated one from another. As if you could say that to be have a pastoral approach of being kind to those people living in sin and giving them Holy Communion. Don't you realize that this will have an effect on the doctrine and it will cause harm to the doctrine? Just like in Vatican II, there were time bombs. And in Vatican II, there were, there, were, there were things that were said in the council that were so ambiguous and so bad that it led to troubles and misinterpretations and evil outside the council. And this is another lie. Because the trouble of Vatican II is not the separation of the pastoral theology from the dogmatic theology. The problem is that Vatican II is filled with heresy. It is filled with lies. It is evil in and of itself. It is straight from hell. The only person that didn't show up at the council was the Holy Ghost. All of the Satan and all of his co all of his cohorts, they were there. And this council is filled with lies. And this council is, is, is communicating the doctrine of hell. It is communicating the doctrine of evolution. The doctrine of modernism. Which is which St. Pius X tells us it is the perfection, the synthesis of all heresies. And the synthesis of all heresies is found in the 16 documents of Vatican II. But the conservatives say, no, the true spirit of the council is good. And the very conservatives say, no, the council has problems. The council indeed has problems. It led to so many difficulties. And all are liars. Living in different parts of the kingdom of hell. Choose your neighborhood. You want to burn in the blue flame? You want to burn in the white flame? You want to burn in the red flame or the yellow flame? Choose your flame. Choose the place where you want to burn. Souls are being damned by this loss of faith. And Father Wegner says, we're going to preach against the synod. And so Father McFarland last week gives a sermon. The four sermons here at St. Mary's. And what does he say? You know, my dear children, my brethren, you know that you are supposed to have children. But remember, having children is not a race. Yes, it is. Read St. Paul. He says, run the race. And everybody better run the race, including mommies. What do you mean you only have ten kids in eight years of marriage? What are you doing? <laughs> And this is supposed to be St. Mary's, where you're supposed to be embarrassed if you have less than ten children. Well, we only have nine kids. I don't know what's going on. Why well, we're trying every day. We only have nine kids. And here in St. Mary's, in the Mecca of babies, we find the priest saying, Do you feel overwhelmed? Do you mothers feel overwhelmed? You know that, remember... <coughs> Having children, you are supposed to and not only procreate children, but the first purpose of marriage 
is the procreation and education of children. If that was the case, no traditional Catholic would have a right to have a child. Because you're too stupid. What is the cause of this grave error? Always add something. That's what they did at Animal Farm. as a communist tactic. No animal shall ever have dealings with humans. And that was one of the seven commandments on Animal Farm. But the pigs came one day, and they started realizing you can make money if you deal with humans. And they can benefit the farm to deal with humans. The other animals complained, why are you dealing with humans? Because the commandment says, no animal shall ever deal with humans. It's no, no, read the commandment thoroughly. It says, as we remember from the very beginning, no animal shall have any dealing with humans unless it's beneficial to the animals. <laughs> oh, that's right. I don't remember that. That's because you've got a bad memory. Don't you remember? We learn in canon law, we learn in dogmatic theology, we learn in the book of Genesis, that the purpose of marriage is the procreation of children. And what do they say? Yes, that's true. The procreation and education. Because after all, if you just have babies, what good is that? You must educate them. And if you cannot educate your children, you should not have too many. And so, what happens? Are you overwhelmed? Come and see the Padres. Now remember, there are many legitimate reasons to practice NFP. How many souls are going to be led astray? Each of us priests has experienced it many times in the past. Leave one parish to another. And mothers come to us and say, Father, see this little baby here? See that other little baby there? I was not going to have any more babies. I said no to babies. Because I've had enough. But because of the preaching of SSPX priests, and because of the reminder of the gospel teaching, here was another baby, and another baby, and another baby. And these babies were born because the priests were preaching the truth. Many, of course, rejected the truth. Many said, like one priest told me, heard after a priest, after a parish, after one of these sermons many years ago, in our SSPX parishes, no priest is going to tell me what to do. Many times the faithful have not listened, but others have. How many babies are going to be spaced out of existence in the name of procreation and education? It is a sin against the first commandment, and not only the fifth, which is murder, and not only the sixth, which are the sins against marriage. It is a sin against the first commandment. How do you know you're going to be around when your baby is born? How many fathers conceived a child and died in the course of the nine months before the baby was born? Not only were they not able to educate their children, they weren't even able to see them with their own eyes. How many millions of fathers did that happen to down the last 6,000 years? Millions of fathers. And how many died when the child was a baby? How many got into accidents and were not able to educate their children? How many of them were ignorant and not able to do any kind of education their children? Who educates the child? Who shall take care of the child? Read the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 5. Seek first the kingdom of God and His justice, and all else shall be added unto you besides. Seek the kingdom of God and His justice, and He will make sure your baby eats. He will make sure he gets educated. How many carpenters and how many guys that are ignoramuses and straight F's in school had a child with half a brain? Had a child that was a genius? How many, how many fathers who can't screw in a light bulb had a child that could do it for them. Dad, it goes like this. <laughs> oh, okay. How many? God knows how to take care of the education of a child. And it is a sin against the first commandment. And what's the heresy that makes it make sense? It's called the heresy of modernism. Which is evolution applied to the Catholic Church. And what does evolution say? Those deficient creatures... That is, stupid mothers and stupid fathers should not have babies because they'll have stupid babies. As Darwin said, when we, when we breed animals, we do not let the weak members of the dog species breed. Why should we allow weak humans to breed? We must be careful in our breeding of humans in order that we might foster evolution. And it makes sense. It makes so much sense. 
And so there is a heresy underlying these teachings. And already in the last 10 years, many, many times, I run into SSPX priests. Before quiet, now is beginning to come out in public. Many telling mothers, oh, go ahead and space your children, don't worry about it. You did your duty. You had enough kids. You've done your duty. And besides, your husband's not a good example. Go ahead and leave him. It's okay. He's not a good example. And you don't just simply have child and child and child. Who is the one that determines whether you have a child? God. There are many couples that have no physical problem with them whatsoever. But they cannot have a baby. And science doesn't know why. And that's because God is in charge of babies and not men. And if you have any doubts about that, read sacred scripture. Read the word of God. Anna was weeping. But she could not have children. Heli, a weak priest. Heli, a priest who was not pleasing to God. Blessed her. And Samuel was born. The child who was a great prophet was born. Same Elizabeth in her old age. And Sarah in her old age. And the fact is that God knows how to make sure that children are born. And many of them be brought about in a most sacred and special way. And therefore parents commit most great sins when they block the workings of God. God is the one who made a girl to be a girl of age and having babies in the 20th century, in the 21st century. God is the one who knows how to take care of those babies. Maybe the mother will die. Maybe the father will die. In my own parish back in Kentucky, 1937 or whatever it was, 1920s, a father and mother of six children were going for a drive to go on a little date. They got in a car accident and were killed. And six children at home. And so the brothers and sisters were not yet married. They devoted their life to raising those six children as their own. And so they did. God provided for those children. And they were raised in the faith. Though the father died and the mother died. St. Alphonsus tells us, How do you know you're going to live tomorrow? How do you know you're going to live another day? And what about the economy? So you've got a good job. Are you going to have it tomorrow? Probably not. And what about all that money you saved so that your children can go to the worst universities to guarantee them a direct path to hell? Make sure that they have an easy path to hell. Now you can pay for their education so they can learn more about Satan, learn more about demonic ways, live an evil life and go straight to hell with a success story written on their back. God is the one who determines the child God is the one who decides when a child should be born, which child should be born. And when the mother and father try to play God, they sin against the first commandment. And when they say, we are going to make sure that we have children that are properly educated, properly spaced, and the mothers cannot be overwhelmed. Why are we overwhelmed? Because we do not have the light of faith. Because we do not believe that we can do as our ancestors did. Because we believe there's another answer than the answer given by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Holy Church. For the last 6,000 years, every single faithful marriage, what have they done? They have accepted all the gifts of children God has given them. And many of them died before their children ever grew up. But God took care of their children anyway. God knows how to take care of children better than mommy and daddy. And so, do not make yourself into God. And so we have a synod on the family, which rips the family apart. We have the enemies of the synod on the family, who commit sins against the family also. Then we have the friends of the family, who are promoting the sins of the family. If you have your children wear dresses all the time, like a priest, an SSPX priest, just a few days ago, mentioning, one of the, one of the, one of the families complained, why are the girls in this parish, a parish on this continent, why are the girls in this parish all wearing pants all the time? And the SSPX priest said, we're not Muslims. Come on, we're not Muslims, be normal. That's what you've got to do, be normal. They don't have to wear dresses. They don't have to have children. They need to be balanced, they need to be normal. These are sins against the first commandment. How 
many of these sins can you defend yourself against? When they say obvious lies from the pulpit, you will understand. But everyone knows <coughs> abortion is wrong. And NFP is terrible. Unless, of course, you have a good reason. And the good reason expands and expands and expands and expands. <coughs> How many babies will not be conceived because of the sins of priests? And they want to somehow make it more easy for the people and not push them too hard. You know, Jesus Christ in his day, he told them to have babies. But that was 2,000 years ago. They didn't have cell phones. They didn't have <coughs> modern bank accounts. They didn't have the modern world. And so Jesus Christ could say those things. You know, he was a prophet of those times, you know. And when it said in the book of Genesis, but oh, they were in paradise, for heaven's sakes. I'd have 50 kids if I lived in paradise too. <laughs> We don't live in paradise. We live in hell. The modern hell of the modern world. We can't have 50 kids. Which child, as we mentioned so many times, is going to take care of you in your old age? Maybe it's the one you never had. And that's why you'll die alone in despair. Which child is going to be the one that keeps another child who wanders away from God and bring him back to the faith? Maybe it'll be the child you never had. Consequences of this sin reached from generation unto generation. Now they are beginning to speak more from the pulpit. Like we mentioned last year in 2013 in the priest retreat <coughs> in Germany. One of the priests in the retreat told me about it. The priest preaching the retreat of the SSPX said, It is irresponsible in our day and time to have more than five or six children. It's just irresponsible. Bishop Fillet was one of the priests attending that retreat. <coughs> Me and Father's priest was sitting in the back and he was in a state of shock. He saw the other priests and almost all of them were going, yes, yes, good point, Father, yes, yes. And so they are taught lies and they teach you lies. But only as you can receive them. It was also mentioned many times, speaking to old priests in India. They came back from Vatican II and they wanted to break the statues and they wanted the people to accept or tear up their rosaries. And they wanted to become modernists. But the people were too fervent. And the Indians are tough. Break their statues, they kill the priest. <laughs> They're not into nice things. <laughs> and so the priest couldn't do it. <coughs> and so they had priest meetings. and said, you know, the people are not yet ready for their statues to be broken. They're not ready for the rosaries to be taken away from them. And so let's be patient with them. Because they're too backwards. And let's slowly, slowly, slowly educate them in the doctrine of Vatican II. And maybe it'll take us 30 years before we can destroy their souls. But let's be patient in that destruction. And that is what the SSPX is doing right now. They have priest meetings all the time. All these meetings and discussions. What we're going to talk about. How we're going to change the education. We're going to bring in the common core curriculum. We're going to bring in all the new things, slowly, 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 so that your faith is sapped away from you, bit by bit by bit, until one day you're not Catholic anymore, and you don't know how it happened. How long can you defend yourself against these modern times? <coughs> what happened to the old preaching of the SSPX? What happened to the old fire and the old brimstone? What happened to the old clear doctrine? What happened to simply standing upon the truth of the gospel which does not need to be altered? Our Lord Jesus Christ didn't forget things. He wasn't like Columbo. He didn't forget things. He didn't need to ask another question afterwards. He said everything he needed to say. He taught everything he needed to teach. <coughs> we say in the Antimodern Soph, we just started the seminary this last week. Some of them have been there for a few weeks. We just started the classes just a few days ago. We have about uh, 11 men, I think, in those classes right now. A few more coming. And, uh, you know, so... Then we started the classes. We begin with the Antimodernist Oath. The Antimodernist Oath says we cannot accept that the truth 
was for that time. And the truth was for a former time. And the truth of the gospel doesn't apply to our time. Because it does. It applies to all time. And the truth does not change. And we reject wholly all the modern false teachings. And now these teachings are coming out more and more. You can't catch them all. Your faith is being sapped away from you in St. Mary's, Kansas. It's being sucked away. They're changing the curriculum. They're bringing computers in the schools. They're changing the direction. Is everything a heresy? No. Is everything evil? No. But the whole thing is. Because they are moving away from Christ. They are moving away from the sacred battle. From the sacred war. Which is the war between heaven and hell. And they're no longer fighting that war. In a memo that just came out a week ago, from Bishop Fillet to all those priories, what is this secret memo? It's always a secret memo. Well, we're concerned about some things going on in the church. We want them to understand the meeting with Cardinal Mueller and Bishop Fillet happened with a spirit of generosity and charity and love and hugs and kisses and so on. And at the end of the meeting, they decided some discussion, some points. And one of them is, it was recommended that the SSPX priories invite the local bishop to come and visit and to establish cordial relations. And so this is the recommendation that we establish cordial relations with the local bishop. And so that's the next step in the policy. But of course, the purpose of these cordial relations, you must always understand, is to convert Rome. And the purpose of these cordial relations is to make everyone else Catholic. And the fact that we're becoming less Catholic every day Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> oh, pay attention to that. Our faith is in the most grave danger. And on this day, a blasphemy takes place in Rome. And blasphemy is taking place every day. But we say the church is getting better. There's more conservative priests. The conservative section of hell is in the southwest section. Mm -hmm. They're warm, but they're dead. And so it's a southwest section. And there's a conservative section in hell. There's a liberal section in hell. There's a section for everybody in hell. There's a place for everyone, because hell is all-inclusive. There's a place for everyone. There is no place only for one, and that is Christ. And the mother from which he comes, and the God which he is, and those that are faithful members of him, and faithful sons of his mother. These have no place in hell. All else have plenty of spaces in hell. And you can choose your own space, and they can all fight amongst themselves. We're going to be more conservative. And they're going to fight amongst themselves. Who's more conservative? Who's more liberal? And they're going to say, we're still standing for the truth. We're in a mass against the Oklahoma uh, black mass. See, we're still fighting for the truth, the new society. But not with the fight they had before. Not with the divine truth. And we're looking too much at ourselves. Not enough at Christ. And not enough at the devil. We should look at God whom we follow. The devil whom we fight. And forget about ourselves. And this is a problem in the new society. And then they say, you must fight for the truth, but be balanced. Be balanced. Don't be too extreme. You catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. And don't be too extreme. Don't be unbalanced. You know, you're just going to drive people away. The devil is driving souls away. And souls, most of them, don't need to be driven away because they already bought the car and they're already driving. They don't need to be driven away. They're driving themselves away because they do not want Christ and they do not want His teaching and they do not want His ways. They don't want it. And so we must open our eyes. Open your eyes. Look at the new society of St. Pius X. He is not the one founded by Jesus the Fifth. He does not stand in the 2,000 years of history of the church. 
It is not communicating the clear doctrine of the church. It is communicating confused doctrine, leading to confusion of souls, and now communicating clearly in many ways error, and error, and error, and heresy. The truth will never change. There's never going to be another answer than the answer given by Christ. Never going to be another answer than the answer given by the saints. Now so many priests run into cases this very week and continuously, 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 SSBX priests sending people to psychiatrists, sending people to psychologists, people that don't believe in the soul. You know, psychiatry is a study of the soul, doctor of the soul, and psychology is a study of the soul. And these morons that are psychologists and psychiatrists, they don't even believe there is a soul. Suppose you want to build a house. So you send your guy to the expert on house building. The only problem is, he doesn't believe in concrete. He doesn't believe in nails. He doesn't believe in wood. He doesn't believe in structure. He doesn't believe in doors. He doesn't believe in windows. He doesn't believe in glass. But he knows everything there is to know about construction. He's an expert. He's a moron. If you go to him, you're more than a moron. <laughs> that is far more evil. Bad, because he might even actually believe what he lives in his own little bitty world. But if you go to him, you're our most grave fool. And what are we doing? We are sending our people to a psychiatrist. You need to take this pill. You need to go to the psychiatrist. You need to see a psychologist. Many of the priests are sent to the seminarians are sent to the psychiatrists. They're sent to the psychologists. You need to see what the experts say. You know what you have? You have an opposition. Oh my goodness, I have memorized it's very important. An opposition uh, dissidence disorder. Mm -hmm. That means you need a pill. It's called the opposition dissidence pill. That makes you, that's called marijuana. That makes you relaxed. Mm -hmm. You take an opposition dissidence pill, which makes you feel more relaxed. You're not so opposed anymore. When you take that pill, are you mad today? No, oh, man, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm cool. All right, you, you, you overcame your opposition dissidence disorder. Because, you see, if you are opposed to the puke going on in modern schools, if you're opposed to the heresy going on in the church, if you're opposed to the evils of the modern world, well, it's not your fault. You have an opposition dissidence disorder. Mm -hmm. ODD. Mm -hmm. And this is overcome by taking pills. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to give you a special pill. It's going to make you feel better. And if you don't overcome it, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to put you away. Oh, no, we have nothing against you. We're just going to have to put you away because you have an opposition dissidence disorder. Mm -hmm. And these are the fools that we send our people to. There's only one disorder amongst human beings. It's called sin. There's only one way for human beings to be ordered. It's called acceptance of the faith and the grace of God. <coughs> and now the priests are finding another answer. We're going to find a balanced answer. We're not going to say, you need to go out and have a million babies like Muslims. Catholics are the ones with a million babies, not Muslims. And we're not going to tell you you need to dress and address dress like Muslims. Muslims wear jeans. They just wear the burqa. Mm. And so, we're not going to tell you to dress like Muslims. We're going to have babies like Muslims. We're going to tell you to be balanced. You've got to fit in the modern world. And that way you're a good example. People need to see that Catholics are normal. Normal people go to hell. Catholics are not normal. Catholics do not follow the norms of the modern world. And they do not follow the norms of the world at any time because we learned in our Holy Catechism that there are three great evils of the Catholic Church. The world is the number one always mentioned. The flesh is number two and the devil is number three. And now they have been mixed together in such harmony that they are one. The devil has so filled the world with the demonic that all you have to do is open your eyes and Satan is everywhere in the world. The flesh has been so corrupted that the devil is everywhere in the flesh, the weakness of the flesh. <coughs> and therefore, we need the grace of God more than we ever needed at any time in history. And we need the truth of God more than we need at any other time in history. And if you expose yourself continually to half-truths, you will find yourself a follower of the Father 
of lies. And the truth must not only be believed, it must be lived inside of our hearts, inside of our bodies, inside of our whole being. You cannot have a modern, indirect, but true promotion of NFP as the new SSPX is pushing it, a balanced fight against the modern errors of the family. We must follow the whole truth that Christ has taught and not play any games with it. And it cannot be done without the love of our Holy Mother. It cannot be done without the love of Mary. It cannot be done without the rosary. It cannot be done without the grace of God. And we cannot mix ourselves. You endanger your souls by going to the new SSPX. You endanger your souls. We used to stay for 40 years. You endanger your souls by going to the Novosorto. You endanger your souls by going to the city of the contest. And now we must add, you endanger your souls by going to the new SSPX. You cannot defend yourself against all the lies, all the errors. They're not all obvious, but they slowly seep into the soul. Like Father Hannah, my old pastor, used to say many times, you lose the faith little by little by little by little, bit by bit by bit by bit, and you don't notice, and one day you wake up and you're not Catholic, and you don't know how it happens. God gives grace, God gives warnings. Respond to those warnings. Respond to that grace. The grace he gives today, he may not give tomorrow. I have on to it today. But we still can. And don't play games with the devil. And stand for the sacred truth. And have the great love of the Blessed Virgin in our hearts. And open your eyes. And see the new direction of the new society is the direction of Vatican II. It is the direction of modernism. It is the direction of Satan. It is the direction towards the Antichrist. Not away from him. Therefore, is a direction that we should not be going in, but remain faithful to the Archbishop Marcel V and the true society St. Pius X that he founded, and remain faithful to the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's all Archbishop Lefebvre did. That's all he was, was a Catholic bishop of the Catholic Church. And he just founded an order, which was supposed to be a Catholic order in the Catholic Church. But it was not Catholic anymore. And we must stay away from it. And Archbishop Lefebvre said many times, if I preach the truth, if I go in the direction of the truth, follow me. But if I go away from it, abandon me. And we, or it must be the sons of Archbishop Lefebvre, must say the same thing. If we of the resistance teach the truth, follow us. But if we teach it not, abandon us. Do not follow the individual. Do not follow the person. Follow Christ. And follow the divine truth. Follow the gospel. <coughs> follow the faith. And he will always provide priests. He will always provide bishops. They will always provide someone to teach that sacred truth. And if we, reach, if we follow them when they're teaching the truth, good. But if they walk away from that truth, abandon them. And that's what our Holy Founder taught us. We must follow His example. <coughs> and we must stand for the truth. And not for the institution, not for the individuals. But for the sacred truth. And this cannot be done without the grace of God. <coughs> Call upon that grace. And He will bless us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.